The Grail card of all Grail cards is up for auction right now, and it's got a really cool story behind it. Let's talk through it. Stick around. all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles, friends. We've got one more day and I'm heading to the National Card Show. I'm very excited. I'm going to do some very amateur vloggy type stuff. So be ready for that. It's going to look like the Blair Witch Project and it's going to be amazing. And when I say amazing, probably awful. But I just want to apologize. But I'm going to do my best and we'll get some some sort of footage out to you. Guys, thank you very much for joining me here. If you are new, please hit the big red button, the subscribe button down below. We're coming out with pretty much daily sports card collectibles content and love doing it. We will continue on. Also connect with me on IG at Sports Card Dad, and I'm also on the Twitter, the Sports Card Dad. Oh, and also don't forget to check out Card Shop Live. They are doing a giveaway $50 for two winners every other week, so every two weeks. All you have to do, download the app. I'll have all the information down in the comment section below. I'll pin it, and then I'll also put it in the video description, but Card Shop Live. Check them out. All right, today we are talking about the iconic 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle card. Really, many, many believe this this is the most important card in card history, at least post-war. Definitely the most important post-war card that exists. And a very special one is at auction right now. It was originally acquired by Mr. Mint, Alan Rosen, and this goes back to the 80s. This guy happened upon In 1986, a family, I believe, in Massachusetts, and this is according to Sports Collectors Daily. I'll have a link to the article so you can check it out yourself, but just great reporting on them. Uh, Just kind of breaks down the gists of it all. But Alan Rosen bought this card along with 5,500 other 1952 Topps cards, including 65 Mantles, 65 52 Topps Mantles, all in the original case. As many know, with 52 Tops, cases and cases of this stuff were dumped into the ocean because they just weren't selling. And this is the stuff that is always so interesting when you think about like what is rare, what is collectible years and years later. So this was a thing that was fairly mass produced back in the day, relatively speaking, and they just couldn't sell it, got rid of it, and now it's scarce and people want it. So you have this combination of demand. The demand curve on this stuff went way up as supply went down on it. And of course, people, you you always hear the stories about these cards were put in bike spokes. Nobody was collecting these cards. I shouldn't say nobody. Some people were collecting these cards. A lot of people were just trashing them. And it's kind of the similar story when you go back to the Honus Wagner and the cigar guards, cigar guards, The cigar cards, going back to the early 1900s, people weren't taking care of these. Were there some collectors of it? Sure, but how many of those collections were lost over time? And how much of these cards, they were just, they were in a tobacco pack, they were ripped off and they're gone. Nobody cared about them. And so Alan bought this set, this 5,500 card, not not a complete set, but 5,500 1952 Tops cards back in 1986 for $125,000, including finder's fees, Unbelievable. If you think about it too, that was a lot of money. That was a lot of money back in, in the 80s. It just was. Adjust that for inflation and it's it's pretty significant. But there was stacks and stacks of what looks like great, great copies of 1952 Topps cards. This is also kind of the, think about how many people out here are buying collections. You know, you hear it all the time. There's all sorts of people. One of my friends, Chris, baseball card collector, investor, dealer, he's constantly buying collections. This is like the holy grail of collection finds. Will there ever be a collection found quite like this? Well, of course, we will have to wait and see, but tremendous. And so what happened was in 1991, Alan Rosen, sold this card to Anthony Giordano, probably saying his last name wrong, apologies, for $50,000 or, according to the article, $109,000 in today's money. But think about that, just going back, this this was a raw copy. He spent 100 Gs, basically, 50,000 back in in 1991, $100,000 in today's dollars for a raw piece of cardboard. Even if it's the most iconic card in the world, 
kudos to him for just having the guts, you know, to do this. And then he hasn't graded it, has not done anything with it for 30 years. For 30 years, this thing stays raw. And even through the pandemic, you know, push where sports cards went absolutely ballistic, I'm sure he was probably paying attention in, in January 2021 when Rob G bought a PSA 9 for $5.2 million. And then, of course, there's a lot of speculation with the PSA 10s. Uh, oh, how much is a PSA 10 worth? 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 50 million. Everyone's got their own opinion on what the PSA say 10s are worth. So he's just sitting there and in the article it mentions his sons were kind of finally like, hey, well actually the sons were saying according to this article that, hey man, dad you should probably look to sell this because are people really going to care about Mickey Mantle in 15, 20 years? And he was having such a hard time letting go of it just being a huge collector and finally, finally gave in through conversations with Derek Grady a longtime professional grader and also Heritage, one of Heritage directors, Lee Iskovitz. They convinced Giordano to send the card to SGC, and it's an SGC 9.5 in the tux. And a big part with this card, as far as kind of the providence of it, is Rosen, who has looked at a lot of cards in his day. He told Giordano that he believes that this is the finest known example in the world. Of course, known example, because that's always the thing. We're always, this is, this is a treasure hunt. You know, with a lot of these cards, you never know what's, what's going to pop out there. I, I mentioned in yesterday's video at the National, they're going to break open a box of 97 Fleer metal basketball. What if a Jordan Green PMG pops out of it? What happens if you're going to buy a collection and you happen on and the people are like, oh yeah, there's this shiny green Jordan card we've had. We don't know much about it because that stuff exists out there. You know, there's kind of this assumption that, you know, the general public has a clue as to what's going on in sports cards, what's valuable, what's not. And a lot don't, you know, a lot were just buying, ripping packs, selecting, didn't pay attention to it. it a lot of the stuff could just be sitting in a shoebox somewhere. Probably is in somebody's attic. You know, a lot of these really rare, scarce cards, again, what makes it fun about kind of treasure hunting, you know, for sports Sports cards, sports cards collections, and the rarity that's associated with a lot of these cards. So this is a very interesting auction. Of course, many people are watching it because it does kind of set the tone. There's three PSA 10s that are out there. And so, you know, for the owners of the PSA 10, they're obviously going to be watching this auction very closely because it's going to set some sort of a barometer, a comp, if you will, you know, for what maybe their PSA 10s go for. Of course, with collectibles, it sells for what somebody will pay for it. But when you're in this auction format and you've got these high end cards like this, there's only so many buyers in the world. And once a few of them get in on a card, it's going to be a bidding war. And then, you know, it can just go bonkers. So it will be interesting. But right this second, as I'm filming this video, we are sitting at a $5.15 million offer. Uh, that would be a $6.18 million total cost when we include the buyer's premium. But don't worry. If, for, if you're like me and you're getting your bid ready, jokes. Oh, and you know we can't afford the fun pack. What do you think, money grows on trees in this family? Take it back. You still have 31 days left in the auction. So can you imagine? I mean, still more than a month to go on this thing. So I, it's going to be obviously a great card to watch. It's great for the hobby because it's, it's one of these clear cut, holy grail type cards. There's no debate really around it. It's a massive, massive card. And it will be just interesting to see because look, we know there's a lot of big money in the hobby. There just is. And this, if you're a big money person, this is it. This is it. Or at least it's one of four copies. If you're looking at this one and the three PSA 10s that are known. So as it sits right now, this is one of the best copies available. We'll just have to see kind of what's what happens. What do you guys think? What's your what's your guess? Put it in the comments below. Is this $8 million card, $10 million card, 15, 20? Is it something wild? 30 billion? You know, what's your guess on what this mantle SGC 95 is going to end up going for? It's an important card. It should be talked about. And good luck to the buyers and the sellers for this one. It won't be me, but maybe one day. Guy can dream. Guys, stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.